More than 100 people took part in an event called Slumber in the Slammer on a Friday evening, November the 3rd. Thank you. <laughs> Life, huh? <laughs> if I were to be arrested, what do you think I'd be arrested for? Tax evasion. Would you say tax evasion? Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> First name? Marissa. Middle name, annoying sister. for supper this evening and we're going to walk this way. You're going to walk straight down this hallway please. down this route was uh, never, I never, never got into trouble, at least on this side of things. So I never got, yeah, to the point where I need to go to jail for, for any reason. You know, so it's like, I wanted to see what, what it's like just, just to see, yeah, the, the curious part of me just, you know, I just, just kind of wanted to. You just wanted to see it. Just wanted to see actually, what, what, is it, what is it like, is it like it, on this side of it? of things. Regardless of whatever that special diet is, sometimes it has to be confirmed, but like for religious diets, if they say they're Muslim or they're Jewish, anything like that, we, we stand by their diet. So oh they, wow. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, we have three washers, three dryers. Um, I don't know if they told you in the uh, in, in, uh, kitchen, we use inmate labor for, for yep. And then we also use inmate labor to uh, do laundry too. So for kitchen and laundry? Kitchen and laundry, yeah. We nice. usually have, I imagine, we usually have two. We probably will have a couple shifts uh, working in here just because of the size mm -hmm. of everything. But they're great. Uh, they really, People, inmates really look forward to doing this because it gives them something to do during yeah. the day. Yeah. Now, this rubber spoons everyone got, 
Is that what they're eating with tonight? It is. Yes, and that's what we're that's what we issue to everybody. And the, we used to do a spork, which was a hardened plastic spork. Mm. Yeah. And the problem was, is we took those, we would put those in at supper and feeding times, and then we take them back and we have to count them to make sure it's because they are a hardened because they are a hardened object yeah. to they make weapons out of them. So if you missed one, then you had to search the whole facility or at least the cells that had where you miscounted or are missing one, you'd have to search to find that spork. So now we've got these rubber spoons that we just issue them when they get booked in and that's theirs to keep that's all while they they're here. To eat everything. That's what they use, yep, rubber spoons. So it'll be fun tonight because they have spaghetti. Yeah, we're gonna see yeah. how it works. How work. So This facility here is gonna help with getting people back into the community yeah it's gonna yeah it's, it's gonna it's gonna help people you know um, when they get here become successful and how to live i i wonder um what did you think when you realized that they were going to do an open house and let people come in from the community to um, stay the night to get go through the process what did you think of that uh, actually, I think it's a great idea. It gives the, it gives the sheriff's office uh, an opportunity for training. Um, you know, before they before they can bring inmates in, they want to make sure that things are running well. So um, I think it was a it was a perfect opportunity for training for the guards. Um, you know, safety not only for the staff but for the inmates as well as the community before they bring in inmates from out. So I think that was a great idea, and I think that it's um, it, it, it was it's good. So this is medical. This is something our uh, we've never had before. Um, our medical uh, unit can, in our old facility consists of a small room with a, a room behind it for exam room. That's it. Did you have a nurse? Did we've had we have a nurse's staff, so we contract with a company that provide nursing care for the inmates. There's uh, I can't remember the exact number. We are working to try to get full overnight coverage for nursing staff. We don't have that yet. For here. For here, here. we're trying that? to do that. Uh, so this is a big medical area. We have isolation cells uh, for inmates that maybe have contagious diseases like COVID or maybe they uh, have some type of injury that prevents them from going in or, or they're on a hunger strike and they need to be watched. So there's just several different possibilities that this could be used for. This area that we're going to next uh, was made specifically for the people that suffer with mental health that they just can't be in regular population because they can't handle it. Mm -hmm. And so it's a different area for maybe we can have it's a smaller area, a quieter area, with a little bit nicer stuff, uh, nicer amenities that mm -hmm. um, that could make it a little bit more tolerable and normal. Yeah, so. This is one side of the behavioral, we call it behavioral management, but it is special needs. Um, this is the male side, if you think of Y chromosome. The other side is labeled X for the women's side. Uh, there are 13 cells, and some of them have double bunks, some of them don't. Um, just depends on, we have different options for maybe they would do better having a, another person in the same cell with them to be able to coexist. Uh, we have a rec yard in this area, uh, so they just so we don't have to take them very far if they want to go into the rec yard. In front of every room is actually, I know it's dark outside now, but that is a moon roof. And it had, it's called a Solo 2 moon roof. So it lets natural light in during the day. It's like a, it's a moon roof on top, and then at night it has LEDs that turn on to maintain that same type of light. But it's natural light during the day. It is, it is getting that dark. Getting it's dark. Yeah, and there's open, there be windows that can open in here. Uh, we have a multi-purpose room for uh, case workers if they want to come and meet with their, we have an interview room and a multi-purpose room for case workers if they want to come meet with their clients. We can do it here instead of having to take people to the jail. The idea is this is where we bring our uh, suicidal inmates because what happens in booking is officers are busy, there's so much going on, and so we wanted to get that, this type of uh, stuff out of booking and to people who can just focus on watching suicidal inmates, watching the mental health, uh, the mentally challenged people that are here. And we also have a judge's office. If a judge, if they ever decide to come over here and do court, we have a big multi-purpose room for court. And we have this courtyard. So this is our control room. Uh, 
big difference for us is, you know, obviously the new tech, the new uh, technology compared to our old system. When I started in the jail, we had an old analog board with buttons that you used to just push. And uh, now we have touch screens. Uh, we have all these new cameras. And we actually have three stations in here. They all work together. So we can have one officer here, one officer there, and one officer over by the window, and they all operate the same doors and everything, answer the phones, answer the intercoms. Like, that's one station, that's another one. Um, they all can do the same thing. So, you know, someone could be on the phone here and he could open the doors if someone asked for a door. Mm -hmm. This hallway right here, if someone were to hit this intercom, it'll automatically pull up two cameras mm -hmm. to show the person that's at that door. And then all you gotta do is talk to them mm -hmm. and see what they want, and then you can open the door. That's just how the cameras and everything is all integrated together. You know, there's about over 300 and, uh, uh, cameras here. I think when I started, there was no recording cameras. It was just the old analog system that um, you had to change a VHS tape to, and it only recorded in booking. And so nothing else was recorded. It was just, you just watched the video, the live feed. And then they've gradually started switching cameras to digital, but I, I maybe a hundred cameras, maybe. There you go. They don't have cameras in every cell though. They don't have cameras in every cell um, like they do here where they have several multiple cameras in it. And part of our old building is actually from the 60s and that is where those jail, the jail door came from. So that's from our 1960s jail. Um, we still use it to house inmates in. It's actually, that's what we added on to. Uh, but we can usually keep our uh, women population. We have like three big uh, cell rooms that, that have bunks in them. And uh, that's where they are usually housed. But they took uh, the construction team. The sheriff really wanted that over here. It's kind of like a hey, this is where we came from. Mm -hmm. The sheriff secretary at the time that was back in the '80s did all the research for all the railroads and the towns and everything, and the, mm -hmm. for that for Saline County. And then the inmate, his name down there is Tom Collette. He uh, painted that on a cell wall, right. on, a, on the on the sheriff's wall as a drywall. It's a dry. It's basically a drywall. And what they did. When they did the add-on is they had to get rid of the wall, so they cut it out with the studs oh, yeah. on it, and then framed it, and then put it, it was been in our lobby ever since I've, you know, it's been in the lobby. Yeah. And then the Sheriff wanted to bring that over here too, so we brought it over. Okay, um, some of the programs we currently have, we have the AA and a Bible studies. We have a yoga program. In January, we're starting with Salina Adult Education Center for high school diplomas and additional education from there as well. Uh, some college are, classes, okay. some just go tech type classes. Mm -hmm. um, they're also helping with some life skills okay. out of, from the Salina Education Center. We're working on our re-entry program, which would allow us to help the inmates make connections from inside jail to outside. So we're working on helping them find jobs. We're working mm -hmm. on helping them find housing. Um, drug or alcohol treatment outside of the facility, we'll connect them with those. If we have homeless clientele, we'll connect them with uh, Salina Grace, mm -hmm. and they'll also help them with housing and Social Security benefits or whatever else they need. Okay. So we are uh, also working on trying to start a veterans housing. Those that come in and are veterans, we're trying to connect them with some of the vet veterans' benefits. Um, we also have Central Kansas Mental Health Caseworker that's in. Very good. Yeah, we Very just, good. They just, Central Kansas just hired her, so she'll be, she'll have an office here and she'll be working full time out of the jail itself. Right now we're actually very well, for where we're at over there, mm -hmm. I mean, we, uh, we have people walking all over. We have a lot of staff right now for the facility and that we have offices. over there. A lot of front, yeah, well, no, we just, so when I say staff, a lot of corrections officers that work okay. in the jail. So we have a lot of their, what they're doing now is preparing to how they're going to work over here so they're starting to work in pairs they're starting to do what that's going to happen over here because over here every area is going to be working in pairs mm -hmm. and because uh, it's such a big like a pod you got 140 inmates on a pod you have to have two people over there to run that pod and right now our jail the way we have to have a minimum staff um, for the jail and that is seven on shift all the time regardless of uh, what's going on to run that facility and you need about 16 here okay and so we were about 30 short at the beginning of the year and the sheriff was able to get our wages up 
so he was able to increase the wages, which brought more people, and now we're actually looking pretty good. So, good and the new facility draws a lot of people in. So, uh, what is your numbers here for inmates? And because you talked about the old, what, what, how many does this yeah. hold? Three hundred ninety-two is the max. That doesn't count. That doesn't count booking people getting processed in and out. So that's just general population mm -hmm. with special needs and medical. That's all three hundred ninety-two bits. So, if you stop the other facility a little earlier. What would you stop this one at if your max is 392? Because like you can hold 192 at the other, right? Right, and we do it at about 160. Yeah. So we would probably stop it here at about 360. See the brick? Uh, they made these from the ground up. So they are they have rebar and concrete, basically a cinder block, and then they put rebar in the middle of it and pour cement down in the middle of it. So that's pretty pretty interesting. Went through pretty seamlessly.